Dear reader, I'm Tony and this is Book Text. I'm coming to you from a different location using a different recording device because I have a different kind of video for you. You're actually in my basement. You can see some of my bookshelves finally, my electric piano, etc. This is actually my, I call this my hobbit chair because I've made a little kind of corner that feels like it belongs in Middle Earth. But I have a very different idea for how I want to do today's video. I want to highlight and maybe start a little bit of a series, a running series uh, of highlighting different modern women writers. And so since it's, uh, first of all, Women's History Month, but also I'm doing March of the Moderns, I thought it would be a great to start this series in March. So the author that I'm going to highlight today, and you'll have to uh, forgive me because I am a college instructor by training. So I made a PowerPoint for this, uh, but the one author that I would like to highlight today is Dame Rose McCulley. So this is an author that I read for the first time last year. I read a book called The World My Wilderness, which I'll share briefly at the end of this uh, slides. But I was kind of blown away by the complexity of her, of her narrative. So I thought I would introduce her to you because she was, I'd never heard of her before last year. Um, and she was quite prolific and quite influential in a certain era of writing. So I'm gonna to introduce to you today, Dame Rose McCulley. My sources will be the Oxford Dictionary of National Biography and the 1987 article called The Pleasures of Rose McCulley. And I will link to those below as well. So she was born Emily Rose McCulley and obviously went by Rose. She lived from 1881 to 1958. So solidly in that kind of modern era where there were a lot of kind of new things, new opportunities for women and she took advantage of them and advocated for more women to be able to take advantage of those opportunities. She was English. Uh, she wrote fiction, nonfiction and poetry, she really ran the gamut there. She was an active feminist and this is what I think is kind of interesting, a devout Anglican who had struggles with faith. I don't think that those things need to be, uh, you know, they can coexist, right? Having faith and having doubt can coexist. And it represents one of the many tensions or dichotomies that Rose McCauley deals with in her writing that I think are really cool that she's navigating these, uh, you know, really tense, lifestyles. So a little bit more about her. See, I don't know if my little video is in the wrong place. She was born August 1st, 1881 in Rugby, Warwickshire, but she grew up near Genoa, Italy, and she was quite a tomboy in Italy. She actually believed that she would grow up to be a man. So that's another theme that comes up in her writing a lot is this idea of kind of gender ambiguity and um, breaking with the established norms. She then attended Somerville College, Oxford in 1900, where she read modern history and fell in love with the 17th century, which actually became a source of a lot of her books as well. She wrote both fiction and nonfiction about that era. World War I broke out she served as a nurse and a land girl, and then later as a servant of the, a civil servant of the war office, uh, where her responsibility was over exemptions and conscientious objectors. Again, another source of tension where she is a servant of the war, but also is helping people who want to be peacemakers, who object to the violence. And again, another tension that comes up in her writing. She did have an affair with a married novelist by the name of Gerald O'Donovan. And so themes of marriage, love, affairs come up in her writing as well. She was part of the Bloomsbury Circle uh, where she met Virginia Woolf and her writing was, was influenced by Virginia Woolf for sure. 
She was then a World War II servant, an ambulance driver during World War II. And there's a couple of interesting things that happened to her during the war. One, she made it on the Nazis kill list. So the Nazis had a list. Uh, if they successfully occupied England, they had a list of artists, philosophers, writers, politicians, kind of key figures, public figures that they were going to execute if, if they were in London. So luckily, they did not succeed in occupying or invading England. But her flat was bombed and destroyed during the war. And there's a cute anecdote about her at this time that I think represents her priorities. So her home library was obviously destroyed during the bombing. And the very first book that she replaced was the Oxford English Dictionary, where she clearly had this love of language. And as a language nerd, I appreciate that. Um, during the war, her lover O'Donovan died of cancer, and this was devastating to her. The whole affair kind of brought up some of that tension with her, uh, with her Anglican religion, but uh, even more so when he died, she was not allowed to grieve publicly because she was the mistress and the wife did not know about her. And she actually stopped writing for a while after his death before she got back on her feet. Later in life, she was made Dame Commander of the Order of the British Empire in 1957 and then died October 30th, 1958. Still an eloquent uh, and elegant old lady. So a little bit more about her writing. Now that we know the context of who she is and what her main influences were, she was considered a to write upper middle brow fiction. And if we were to put that in kind of contemporary words or modern words, uh, she wasn't writing literary fiction, and she wasn't writing trashy romance, but she was writing somewhere in between what I might call women's fiction. So not quite chick lit, but that might be just a derogatory term for the kind of things that she was writing. They focused on women and women's relationships. She was then influenced, of course, by Virginia Woolf, and actually wrote a book of literary analysis of Woolf's writings. Her nonfiction focused on history, especially the 17th century that she loved, language, and travel. She actually wrote a tour of the uh, greatest, the world's greatest ruins. And I found this description of her love of history and ruins fascinating. She greeted each ruin with enthusiasm, knowing everything earlier visitors had written investigating with intelligence each new dig, revisiting ruins loved since childhood, swimming wherever possible. So she was a huge history nerd. Her early fiction focused primarily on women's life at home and the sense of loss and isolation from maybe a loss of freedom from that lifestyle. Later in her career, she wrote with a gentle irony and uh, focused on the absurdities of society. So I really liked this explanation of her writing style. She wrote with a witty and aphoristic style, meaning that she wrote a lot of great one-liners that you just want to quote for the rest of your life. Uh, so there's a lot of humor, but sometimes it's quite dark humor in these books. Her favorite book of what she wrote was a book called They Were Defeated, published in 1932, which was about a woman writer in history who was defeated by social pressures. So you can see that maybe she was drawing from her own experience, or at least the experiences of women writers in her era, in her social circles. Some notable works. I have not read all of these. The one I read is The World, My Wilderness in the bottom left. Uh, which is about a young woman, really a tomboy, so that kind of harking back to her experience as a tomboy, who is kind of scampering around the ruins of uh, post-World War II London with a gang of young men. It, it's very interesting, quite dark, not, not as funny as I think other, uh, others of her works. For example, Crew Train, I understand, is, is a funny uh, book about a, a tomboy. Pleasure of Ruins would be one of her nonfiction works about the world's greatest ruins. 
and so on. Like I said, I haven't read all of these, but maybe it's a, a good place for you to start. You can clearly see that she has been published by a lot of different publishers throughout uh, history. And I think that's really cool that she has been republished and reprinted for a long time. I will leave you with a couple of final thoughts about her writings. So in the research that I did, um, I found that her books frequently testify to her abiding affection for the Anglican church, even though she struggled with it. She stopped attending during her affair, etc. She really believed in that higher power and in the importance of that kind of church community. She also wrote a lot of strong heroines, strong meaning complex, right? They were, they were three-dimensional. And this description of, of her heroines is that at, particularly at night, they were beset with terror and the bitter waves of fruitless passion. So it's really a psychological insight into all of these characters. Recurring tones that she reused in her books, ironic, bland, elegant, detached, celibate, urbane, rakish, scholarly, civilized. I'm all over the place. One of her target audiences was Elizabeth Bowen, who is another of her contemporaries along with Virginia Woolf. And so you can kind of maybe get a feel for what her writing is like. I would compare it to Virginia Woolf and, and Elizabeth Bowen. And then I will just end with this beautiful description of Rose's personality. She thinks the world amazing and comic. She is delighted by people and their odd ways. I hope you try Rose McCauley if you have not already. Please tell me in the comments if you have read Rose McCauley before and what you think of her. And if you're planning to try her again or, or for the first time if you've not encountered her before. Remember, there's always another book.